Okay, okay, so we are restarting this paint along. Um, so sorry for some reason. It was sideways for everybody, so I hope that um, you guys are gonna be jumping in here. Um, I'm just gonna start from the beginning. I'm Allie. <laughs> um, I do these live paint alongs every Monday at five Eastern, and this is our fifth uh, paint along in the Farm Animal series. Um, welcome everybody who's jumping in. Um, if somebody could just type into the comments and let me know if we have corrected this issue of the video being sideways, I'd be super grateful because I don't want to go through it all over again. Um, so somebody just let me know if it's showing up. Okay, Renee says better. So we're good, awesome. I don't know why that was so weird last time, but I'm glad you guys are finding me again. Just gonna get started a few minutes late. Um, again, please jump in and tell us where you're watching from. Everyone likes to see it. I deleted the other video, so nobody will see that one. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, I'm just gonna show you guys real quick in case you didn't see. These are some of the other paint alongs. We did the alpaca last week. And we started with the cow, which was our first farm animal. This one was super popular. So many of you guys did that one. Um, and we did the pig, fancy the pig. So I love these. We also did um, a rooster, but I sold my rooster, so I can't show that to you guys. Um, but uh, so many of you are joining me for this, and if you are new, let me just explain how it works. So these paint-alongs are free to watch, um, but if you wanna jump in the fun and paint this with me, you can download the outlines and the um, color sheet on my website for $10. Um, and you can always go back and watch these afterwards as a replay. Um, so if you're not ready now, don't worry about it, just watch it. And then you can go to my website and get your outlines afterwards. And that's just alliecasestudio.com. So that's how it works. Um, I wanna know if you are painting this duck with me. So if you are, please uh, let everybody know. And then again, please, at the end, I would love for you to share your duck painting in my group, Ellie's Paint Friends. It's always fun to see those pop up. Um, all right, everybody ready? Let's paint this duck. We're kinda starting a few minutes late, but we're good. Okay. Here we go again. Thank you everybody who is finding me again. I'm so glad we corrected that. And we're good. Let's see here. Let's see, we got the camera set up pretty well, I think. You guys can see the duck and my reference image. So um, if you're painting with me, you transferred your outlines using transfer paper. And we wanna show you my palette too. Um, there we go. Edna says, first time watching, we'll be painting later. Edna, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me and you're watching this demo and that you're gonna paint it later. I can't wait to see yours. Um, okay, so you transferred the lines and then we painted over them using a skinny little script liner brush and a light purple made from white, Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson. So I just did a quick uh, outline over the pencil marks. Um, and now the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to start looking for the shadows. So I kind of start these this, pretty much the same way every time. Um, we start out by doing a wash of the shadows. So we make our shadow color using alizarin crimson and Payne's gray and we just water that down and that makes kind of a nice grayed out purple um judy thank you for sharing it and amy's asking is tomorrow the flowers everyone's so excited about the flowers um amy i only do these once a week <laughs> so it will be next week monday um so i hope you'll join me for the flowers um, if you're on my email list, you will get an email about that. That goes out every Friday, um, but I'll also post the flower download um, on my Facebook page here. So, got a little glob of paint in there. So again, this uh, purple is alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. And I'm just looking for the shadows so I can see that this part of the duck here is definitely the darkest part of the painting. So that's where I'm starting. Um, 
Deborah in Houston. Welcome, Deborah. I used to live in Houston, and this time of year is just lovely in Houston. <laughs> Summer, not as much, but this time of year is awesome. <laughs> All right, so I'm just looking around. And I'm gonna skip the eye, even though I know it's dark in there, because I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. I'm using a number three flat brush. Um, and I forgot to mention, we are using Golden Fluid Acrylics for this. Um, and if you have the download, you have a list of the paints that I use um, for this demo. But if you don't have golden fluid acrylics, if you just have some other acrylics, you can totally still do this. I just really prefer the golden. Um, it's my paint of choice. Anyone who has tried it will know exactly why because their paints are just so rich and wonderful. And they are more expensive, but you get a lot more bang for your buck with them because they have so much pigment that they go a really long ways and they last forever. Um, welcome Stacy and Crystal. Um, and again, you guys that are watching this live, um, tell me if you're painting the deck with me and then also just let me know if you have any questions. Um, that's the great part about being here for the live demo is you can ask questions and I try to always look back at the comments and see what's going on. If I miss your comment, I always try to um, scroll through them after the demo on Monday night and make sure that I answer any questions that you might have. So one way or another, I'll get it answered. All right, I think this one's gonna be pretty easy. I have to admit, last week, um, the alpaca was a little bit more of a challenge. I'm sure um, those of you that tried it kind of felt that. Um, I know it just, I think it was because it was like backlit that there was light wrapping around it um, and there was a lot of texture. So I don't want you to be scared of doing the alpaca, but um, I did wanna do one that was a little bit simpler this week because I felt like you guys were ready for that. <laughs> but don't be scared of painting the alpaca. You, there were many very cool looking alpacas that came out of last week's demo. Um, um, your favorite was the alpaca. Awesome. I love seeing that. You know, that's funny because I bet we all have stories like this where sometimes, you know, maybe you're working on a series of paintings and you might have one that you just can't get it to work, right? You just keep going and you don't feel like it's, it's that, that good. And then if you have a show or, you know, a sale, al almost always that'll be the first one that I sell. <laughs> It's like, you know, sometimes we're super critical of ourselves and other people just don't see it that way. So a little bit of encouragement there for you if you're ever struggling with a piece. Um, Sharon says, looks like I might be able to do this. Can I use oils? Um, yes, Sharon, you can, but you will um, see the process where we're layering a lot of colors. So if you use oils, you're going to need to wait for your layers to dry in between. So, you know, with oils, that might be a day or so in between the layers, maybe more, depending on how thick you put it down and if you use any um, medium with it. But yeah, you can definitely follow this process with oil. Okay, I'm just very slightly indicating this little bit of texture here. This duck is kind of sitting on maybe a dock or something. I don't know if I'm gonna include that or not, but we'll just give a little indication of it. Um, okay, so I've been painting in the shadows in the duck. Now when we switch to the beak, do you guys notice how the beak is actually lighter than the background? It's different how here we have the head is darker than the background. I should put in a little shadow there. So that's why I made the head dark. But now we're gonna switch when we get to the beak and I'm gonna paint around it rather than painting it in because I see the background is darker than the beak. So you gotta pay attention to those color shifts. We talked about that last week. Um, so again, we're not looking at color. Uh, I shouldn't say color shifts. I should say the tone or the value. Yes, value, that's the word I was looking for. The value is shifting. We're not even worrying about the color at all right now. 
We'll worry about the color much later. All right, we're gonna put a little bit in the background here and a little bit of shadow. We kind of, I did some editing to this photo. You guys probably see that, how I did a filter on the photo. And I should mention this photo came from my paint friend, Bambi. She submitted this. I was asking for duck photos. So she shared this one, which I really liked. Um, and then I edited it a little bit to make it easier to paint from. So I use an app called PixArt and I like the geode filter in that app. Okay, so we've got our first wash here of some color. Put a little bit right there. Um, and now we're gonna go back and push the darkest areas a little bit darker. Um, so we are going to go back with the same two colors. Um, and we're going to push it a little bit darker. So now we're gonna have um, not as much water in there, actually almost no water. And we're going to look for the areas that are really dark. So we're putting this in here. Pushing that next layer of dark. just building up form and it's like almost black here but I never ever use black. I feel like it's like a sin to use black. Uh, I don't buy black paint. I always mix my blacks because um, I feel like it's uh, so much more interesting um, to have more of like a deep inky purple than a black. Okay, so. Continuing around, now the next dark place I see is this little wedge right here that's almost completely black here. But again, we're just using this combination of alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. And then it gets pretty dark right here, not quite as dark. So I'm offloading my brush just a little bit, but we're gonna put a little bit of shadow in there. And it's pretty dark along the edge of the duck. I'm not gonna do a perfect line, but I just wanna build up that shadow a little bit. That looks pretty good. Um, well, I got a little hump right here that I wanna catch. Okay, um, now I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. I'm gonna put the dark in for the eye. So I'm gonna go down to a pretty tiny one because um, I wanna get that in pretty accurately. So like a number one, or you could use your script liner brush if your number one is a little too big. Um, so I'm just gonna get in nice and close. And I've got that little sparkle that I guess I'm gonna paint around it. I could just add that in on top of the black, but I'll paint around it. Okay. Get in a little bit darker around here. We're leaving kind of a ring of highlight around the eye. I'll put a little shadow in the nose. A little bit there by the mouth. Looks like he's smiling. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. I think we might be ready for our wash of color now. I'm just putting in a few extra little details of this dark. Okay, so now that we have the shadows mapped out, now I like to do a complementary color underpainting. So those of you that um, join me for all my paint alongs, you guys know the drill, um, and I've talked about this a lot before, but I know we always have new people. So I like to wash over my whole panel once I've got the underpainting tones mapped out. I like to wash over the panel with a complementary color. And we do that for a couple of reasons. Um, complementary means opposite on the color wheel. Um, so the reason, one of the reasons why we do it is it will make the top layer pop if it's contrasted by its opposite. Um, and then another reason is it just makes the painting 
more finished um, when we don't have white on the panel to start out with. So I wanna just cover up all that white. Um, and this is going to kind of serve as like our mid-tone and then we can push our darks darker and our lights lighter. And it just helps us to actually kind of skip some steps. Um, okay, so what color do we wanna do for underpainting? Um, I think for the background, I'm going to do, uh, this is kind of my go-to combo for underneath like green. Um, I'm going to do alizarin crimson and hansa yellow. When you mix those two together, it makes a really nice burnt orange. So I'm going to do that and I'll add a little bit of water to it. For some reason, I don't like really intense orange, so that's why I like this kind of burnt orange. Um, and our, our underpainting is just gonna go right on top of the shadows that we've already put down. I need a little more water in there. Also, um, don't worry about being like perfectly uh, on the edge with your underpainting. It's okay and actually good if some of it kinda goes into the duck. Um, and then when we wash over the duck, we'll let some of that color kind of bleed into our background too. Now up here at the right where I can see the overpainting, the green, it gets lighter. I'm actually thinning my orange out a little bit to make it a little lighter there. So I made it darker on the left side and I'm doing it lighter on the right side because I know that that's how the painting will look in the end. It will be darker here and lighter here. So I, I match that with my underpainting. So this is pretty watery, putting it on pretty thin here. You can see it's kind of dripping and I'm kind of catching the drips, but I'm actually not really worried about the brush strokes because um, we're going to be pretty much covering all of that up anyways. See how I'm kind of like changing the direction of my brush strokes? Not that that really matters, but I do kind of think about that. Um, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to jump in. Also, I haven't noticed here if anybody mentioned that they were painting with me live. I wanna know if you are. I love seeing your paintings. Okay, now I think um, the, the ground here, or this dock, is pretty light. Um, it's like a bluish gray tone. I think I'm gonna use the same color combo, but I'm gonna shift it, add a little bit more yellow, and thin it out a little bit. Um, so it's still alizarin crimson and hansa yellow, but it's gonna look a little bit different, a little bit more gold, because I added some more yellow, and I'm just gonna spread it out a little more. And I didn't mention, I switched to a larger brush, so now I'm using a six flat. Um, so there we go. Okay, um, now what color do we want to do for the underpainting of the duck? So the duck's a few different colors. Um, for the beak and the body, I'm going to wash that in with my other favorite color underpainting, and that is Permanent Violet Dark, um, one of my most favorite colors from Golden. So I'm gonna do that, so purple and yellow are kind of opposites, so I'm gonna do that under the beak. And, you know, the body is kind of like a lot of different tones. <laughs> it's, it's got like, you know, reds and grays. I'm just gonna simplify it and do an, a purple underpainting under the whole thing. So I don't always do the opposite of every single color. Sometimes I just kind of simplify because I don't want to have like too many different tones of underpainting going on. That gets too busy. Um, let's see. Cindy says, watching now, waiting for my paints to come in the mail. Okay, Cindy, I that's awesome. Thanks for letting me know. And I look forward to seeing your painting when your paints come. You're going to be so excited when you get your new golden paints. They are amazing. Okay, so should we do purple under the head too? Yeah, let's just do that. We're gonna do the purple all the way up. So we're just going over everything, just making it easy. The purple on my beak really washed out. I might do another little layer there. 
So this recipe of some areas being a purple underpainting and other areas being that burnt orange, um, I do that a lot. I do that for a lot of portraits. It's just something I go back to over and over again. So if you're ever questioning what color you should do under an underpaint for an underpainting, um, just use the purple. <laughs> you can't go wrong. It's such a great color. Um, let's see, Perry said, I have not painted in years. Usually just use acrylics. Well, these are acrylics, Perry, and I think you should get back to painting. Um, I hope maybe this demo will inspire you to do that. The cool thing about these paint-alongs is it's just an hour, and, you know, to get the download, it's just $10. So it's not like a, there's no pressure, really. Um, and I think because of that, a lot of people have gotten back into painting and done a lot more of it because they have had fun just kind of jumping in. It's just an hour. Okay, so there is our underpainting. We've got it in there. Um, now, before we start layering color on here, we do kind of want, um, we want this layer to be dry. We don't want the next layer of paint to mush into this. We want it to sit on top of it. Um, so if anyone has any questions right now, that'd be a good time to ask because I've got a minute. Um, and uh, always happy to help and give you any advice that you might be wondering about. Um, if not, I'll probably, I could probably jump in and put the deck color in here because this yellow is dry. Um, normally that's not the first thing I would do, but um, we'll just start there. This is dry enough. Okay, so we, so far we thin the paint only with water. Now for this next round, um, I'm gonna thin the paint with glaze. So this is Liquitex glazing medium in a matte finish. You don't have to use this exact one. I just, this is what I usually buy. Liquitex is cheaper than golden and I don't think it matters as much for the glaze. Um, hi, Christine. Glad you're enjoying it. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's mix up this gray tone. So let's see here. Um, we're going to make that color using um, white and a little bit of Payne's gray, which we already have out. Um, and we're going to use a little bit of that alizarin crimson. So it's gonna be kind of like a purpley gray tone. Um, Crystal said, having trouble with the alpaca, the body is overwhelming. You know, I understand, Crystal. That one, I'm gonna to have to admit, that one was more of a challenge. But um, I noticed with mine, at least, when I got away from it for a little bit and kind of looked at what I did from a distance, I was actually a lot more pleased with it. So you might just need a little break. <laughs> All right, so we've got this kind of light gray, and I'm going to just start putting some of that into this background, um, and I'm leaving little bits of my nice orange underpainting poking through, um, and I'm kind of chipping away at those outlines that I put down, because I don't want those to really show up, so I'm kind of giving them a little bit of indication, but not too much. I don't want that to be too busy. And we can always come back and cover up more of this orange. So I always say err on the side of leaving more of the underpainting showing right now because you can always adjust it later. So maybe let's just do that much for right now. Um, okay, and actually while we have this color on our brush, I see a little bit of it going right into the bird. So I'm going to um, just use it on there and put that little highlight. I just added a little more glaze to thin it out. I don't know if you guys can see my palette. But let's see, I want you to be able to see my palette a little bit more, if you can. I'm trying to adjust, that might, maybe you can see some of it, yeah, maybe not, if I go this way, yeah. Okay, so I've got some of that highlight right here, and again, you wanna leave little bits of that purple showing. Oh, my underpainting is a little wet still right there. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Um, so I see some little bits of this kind of gray tone over here. Again, this gray is just, um, it's alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, and white. 
little bits right there. A little highlight coming down there. We'll put this little ring by the neck. That's gonna get brighter, but we'll just start to indicate it here a little bit. Okay, I think I might not do any more on the purple right now because I feel like my purple at least is still wet and that means yours probably is too. So let's take a break from the purple and let's see if our background is dry. I have a couple little globs that I'm just gonna blot, but then I think we can start putting some of that green in in the background. Um, let's see, Renee is saying, so you're mixing glazing medium with the paint. Yes, um, so what I like to do, Renee, is I keep my glaze in one of these little small compartments. Um, Oh, so I keep my glaze in these little small compartments and then I do my mixing in the larger compartments. Um, and so then I just add the glaze in as, as needed there. Um, let's see, Perry's asking, how do you show what you painted in the past? Um, I guess I'm not exactly sure what you mean, uh, Perry. I don't know if you mean for paint-alongs. All of my previous paint-alongs are on my um, my... Facebook page here under videos tab, and you can also find them on my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's mix up our green in the background. So we're going to do that using Hansa Yellow Opaque. And um, we will do that with some titanium white. And now we're going to use just the tiniest little speck of phthalo green. And I mean like super duper tiny because phthalo green is an incredibly intense color. Like you barely need to even look at it and it's gonna totally change your paint color. So it's gonna be a lot more of the yellow and the white than of the phthalo green. Um, Deb's asking, can you tell us where you got your palette? So I have two palettes here and these are from Hobby Lobby. Um, that's my go-to palette. Okay, so we've got Hans Yellow Opaque, Phthalo Green, Titanium White. Um, and now I wanna dull it down just a pinch, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that Alizarin Crimson that I was using just to knock it back. Because I feel like so many times I see greens um, when people are doing nature and they're just way too intense. So I always say, always add a little bit of brown or red to your green because otherwise it's just like gonna give you a headache when you look at it. Um, so we've got this kind of muted green here and I got a little glaze in there and I'm just gonna start dropping that into the background. And you can see the background like definitely shifts. It's got light greens and dark greens. Um, part of that is just kind of like how the filter uh, changed the photo. And there's this white wedge here. It looks like the dock goes straight and then it goes up. I'm gonna ignore where it goes up. I'm just gonna make it go straight. Um, let's see, Crystal said, no Hobby Lobby near me, order from Dick Blick. Um, you could probably find something similar from Dick Blick. Hobby Lobby, you can also order from online. So I don't know if you could get it delivered, um, but these palettes are only like $5 from Hobby Lobby. So that's kind of why I like those. So part, um, one thing I want you to be aware of when you are doing the background here is you don't wanna like create a perfect pattern. Um, we just have, our brains have a tendency to want to start spacing all these chunks out perfectly. And before you know it, it looks like he's like standing in front of a piece of fabric or something. It's like too perfect. Um, so make some of your little islands bigger and some smaller. Um, I just switched to a bigger brush. So I'm using a six now. Um, and I need a little bit more paint. I didn't mix up enough. So I'm gonna go back, get a little more yellow, tiny bit of that phthalo green, some white, and a little bit of alizarin crimson. And when I'm mixing this again, it's okay if it doesn't match the first. Um, round of green. In fact, that's actually better because um, you don't want all your greens to be the same. So 
I know some people ask me about like, how do I keep my paint wet? And I guess my answer is I don't. I just keep going and making more of it. Um, and also then I just paint really fast too. <laughs> Okay, some chunks over here. I like to leave some little bits of that orange kind of dancing around the edge of the subject, in this case, the duck. So that's kind of something I do over and over again when I'm painting a subject in front of a background that's kind of just blurry, I guess. Um, Let's see, Patty asks, how do you clean your palette? Do you let it dry and peel out? I sure do, Patty. I do not like to clean my palettes, and that's why you see all these different colors on my palette, because I just wait for it to get really thick, and then I peel it out. <laughs> um, okay, so this was kind of like our mid-tone of green in the background. Now let's push it a little bit darker. So we're gonna add a tiny bit more of that phthalo green, and then some more alizarin crimson, and some more yellow. So we're gonna add more of everything except for the white. Um, but again, be careful with that phthalo green. You don't want it to totally take over. You've gotta balance it out with some alizarin crimson and yellow. And I really like the Hansa Yellow Opaque by Golden because yellows are usually pretty transparent, but the Hansa Yellow Opaque packs a nice little punch. Okay, so I'm gonna start putting this kind of more, let's see, army green, olive green. I'm gonna put that in to my background. And I'm not gonna be mixing these colors in the background, so I'm just gonna let them sit next to each other. I'm gonna let the eye do the mixing. So don't try to be blending your backgrounds. It's just really not necessary. We're just gonna make kind of some steps between these green tones. My first layer of green is a little bit wet and I would actually prefer for it not to be because I don't want them to mix together. But that's just the way it is. Remember to leave those little bits of orange. Don't cover them all up. It's really easy to do that. If you see yourself starting to do that, just stop. <laughs> all right, put some in here. And I know it looks really blotchy right now, but we're gonna add some more layers of green in the background that are gonna kind of fuse some of these little islands together. So don't worry about it. All right, good enough in the background. Okay, now I wanna switch and make a green that's slightly brighter than that first layer of green. So now I don't want it to be um, muted. So I'm not gonna add any red or brown to it this time. I'm going to make a new really bright green, but I'm still gonna be careful not to use too much of that phthalo green. Um, so I'm gonna use some white and Hansa yellow. And again, just the tiniest little dot of phthalo green. But this is gonna be like a real bright spring green. My Hansa yellow is a little bit dirty. I'm gonna get some new Hansa yellow. I don't want it to be contaminated. All right, so that's looking better. A little bit more green. Okay, so this, like I said, it's gonna be brighter than that first step so i'm looking for the areas that are the brightest and i see it's pretty bright right here and you can see when i start to put these bright colors in the background what happens is it makes the duck pop out and it actually makes the duck look darker because it's contrasted by the opposite um, being so bright in the background so one way to make a subject look darker or brighter is to do the opposite right behind it and just gonna Pop a few more of these in. And then I wanna take a break from the background because I'm not quite done with it, but I wanna get in and start putting some color in that duck. 
Um, so, you know, I like to work my way around the painting. I don't like to stay in one area for too long. And I think that is part of how I get my paintings done more quickly is because I just keep moving. I don't get hung up in any one spot. I like to just kind of work around it. Um, so that's another piece of advice. If you ever feel like you're stuck on a painting, um, just move to a different part of it. Don't, don't stay stuck in the part that's hard for you. Just go somewhere else. Okay, let's be done with the background for right now and let's start putting some color on this duck. All right, let's start with the beak. So um, we are going to make this yellow for the beak using Hansa Yellow and white. Let me get myself some more white. I'm going to use Hansa Yellow, white, and we're going to put um, a little speck of Pyrrole Red light in there because I want to warm up this yellow tone. Um, so Pyrrole Red light, Hansa Yellow, opaque, and white. Tiniest little speck of that Pyrrole Red. That's just going to give us more of a warmer yellow tone. And I'm switching down to my smaller brush. I've got my three flat brush here now. Um, and again, don't cover up all of the purple. Try to leave some little windows of that in there. We're painting around the little nostril. And there's like a, a highlight on there, but we're gonna let this first layer of yellow dry and then we'll go back and add that little highlight. And I'm gonna let the purple kind of serve as the shadow that I'm seeing underneath the bill here. So, yeah, I'm gonna let that be. And I'm going to put some color on the head now. We've got this beautiful blue reflection on the head. I think that's why I was really drawn to this image. Um, just look and see if there are any comments that I'm missing here. Um, I think we're good. Okay, so I'm going to um, find this highlight color and I'm going to use, um, going to use Thalo Blue Green Shade for that. Um, that's one of my other favorite colors from Golden. It's super duper strong, just like the Thalo Green, so you gotta be careful with it. Um, but we're going to do that. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of white to it and I'm going to also add a little bit of, um, Payne's gray. I just want to dull it down a little bit. Payne's gray is like a really nice navy blue. So we're going to, so again, it's, um, phthalo blue, green shade, Payne's gray and white. And I'm going to use this to start popping this highlight on the head. Again, I don't wanna cover up all my purple. And this highlight is not the brightest blue. We're gonna build our way towards the brightest blue. So it's gonna go kind of along the edge here of this area that we left for a highlight. We're gonna leave the middle open yet because that's where it's gonna get um, quite a bit brighter. See, I'm just kind of like laying down a brush stroke and then moving on. I'm not scrubbing it in. I'm just laying them down. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to make that brighter blue highlight that's in the middle. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to mix that up in a new area. Um, and that is going to be phthalo blue phthalo, and phthalo green and white. So it's going to be more of like a teal. Um, but it's not going to be as much of the phthalo green. It's going to be more of the phthalo blue and white. And this time we'll add a little bit more white to it to make it a little bit brighter. So we'll just... That's really gonna look nice, I think. Pr 
probably after this dries, I'll even go in and add another layer of color. But this is starting to pop. Now it gets darker down here. The brightest area is right about here. So now I'm gonna go in and put a little bit more green in it to darken it up a little bit. A little bit more of that phthalo green. Yeah, that green looks really cool with the purple. Okay, now let's wait for this to dry before we do anything else um, just on that highlight, but we can start to kind of tint some of the dark shadows because right now we just put those in with our first wash. Um, so we're going to make our new blue that's gonna be darker than what we've got here. We're gonna use um, Payne's Gray Maybe we'll just do Payne's Gray and white, just a tiny bit of white, mostly Payne's Gray. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Payne's Gray and white is gonna be our new darker blue. And I'll put some of this into those areas of shadow. It's gonna make those feel more finished. And this is probably hard for you to see on the camera, I imagine, because it's so dark. Um, but I'm just looking for those areas that are the very darkest and I'm just adding in some Payne's Gray and white. So it's not totally as dark as the Payne's Gray because I put a little bit of white in there. All right, and I'm gonna switch down to my little brush and I'm gonna put some of this color in the eye here, the Payne's Gray and white. And I'm just gonna get that right in the center to fill that in. And then let's do this little ring around the eye because there's this kind of lid that's a highlight. Um, and it's really just like a gray. So we'll actually just go back to our um, mixture that we started out with that was white, alizarin, crimson, and Payne's gray. We made that kind of dirty purple. We'll just go back and use that, but I'm adding a little bit more of the alizarin crimson and Payne's gray, but I have my tiny little brush here. You guys see that? Um, and I'm just gonna put that little lid very subtly around the eye. We don't want it to be too bright because then it'll look too dramatic. And it also doesn't have to be like continuous, the same thickness or really even showing up at all the same. And there's a little chunk on the side there. Yeah, okay, and then I'm gonna add a little more white to it and we'll add that little sparkle in the middle of the eye because that kind of went away. That always looks good when you do that little sparkle. I know when I do portraits, there it is. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe you can. Um, and maybe we'll use that same white to make just part of the lid a little bit brighter. That was a little too fat on mine. So this light gray purple is white, alizarin crimson, and Payne's gray. There we go. It's looking good. Okay, let's put some color in the body. I'm liking this duck. This duck's got a lot of personality. All right, so um, let's start with this like wedge of kind of a brown tone. So we'll make that using um, some burnt umber light and a little bit of, I gotta find a dry spot on my palette. Um, we're gonna do Burnt Umber Light and a little bit of that Pyrrole Red Light. That's gonna make kind of like a nice warm reddish brown. And we'll pop that into this area. Um, not completely filling it in. And of course we want to leave little bits of our purple underpainting showing. I'm maybe making mine a little bit more red than what I see. I'm gonna add a little more burnt umber to that. But I like that red, so I might even just let it stay a little more red than what it is, because I think it looks good with the blue. Okay, um, yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit more, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it and kind of soften the edge right here. So I'm, I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to my burnt umber and pyrrole red light, making it a little bit 
softer. Yeah, a little bit more white actually. Um, hi Karen. Thank you for jumping in and saying hi. Okay. There we go. That stopped ringing. You know, I have my phone on do not disturb, but does it still disturb me? Yeah, it does. <laughs> kind of like with my kids. All right, I've gotten so many junk calls lately. I don't know if anybody else is feeling this, but it's been like nonstop. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same color, this Burnt Umber Light Pyrrole Red and White, and I'm going to put some of the tones in the wing with this color, because I'm seeing some of these kind of brown tones coming along the wing here. Remember to leave that purple. Got some up here. Purple is just such a nice color for an underpainting because it's kind of like a natural shadow. Um, I don't like painting shadows as gray, obviously, because gray is boring. So um, purple is just always better than, than gray. <laughs> um, okay, we got a little bit underneath the wing here. All right. There we go. Okay, so now let's add a little bit more white to it. Um, I take that back. We're gonna mix a new color because I don't want any more of that uh, red in there. I'm gonna make a gray for the body here. So this gray that I'm gonna make for the body will be um, Payne's gray and white. Let's see how those two look together. Maybe we'll add We'll add a little bit of burnt umber in there too. So this is gonna be Payne's Gray, White, and Burnt Umber. That'll be our gray for the body. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit cooler, but that's what I'm seeing here. Got some of this Cool gray on the wing here. Picking up a little bit over here. Now it gets brighter right here, so we might uh, go back and lighten that a little bit. We've got this kind of dark span that comes down here. Okay, um, now right here, this dark gets even darker because there's a shadow there. So let's add a little bit more Payne's Gray to it and a little bit more Burnt Umber. So it's still gonna be the same colors, but there'll be more Payne's Gray, more Burnt Umber to push this gray tone a little bit darker because we've got this dark shadow under the belly here. And then I'm looking to see where else I see some dark shadows. I see some of these little wings right here. And it gets pretty dark on the edge of the wing here. Maybe I'll pop a little bit in there. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Looking around. That might be a little too dark. Got some little bits of dark up here by the neck. And actually, we've got some cool areas on top of this brownish red that I put in there, so maybe I'll use a little bit of this gray on top of there, too. There's a lot of color going on in this duck. It's easy to miss. Okay, that works for me. Okay, so we still have some areas that I haven't put in that are a little bit on the lighter and warmer side. So I'm going to put those in. I'm gonna go back to my recipe of burnt umber and the pyrrole red light and white, but now I'm gonna use a little bit more white. 
So it's gonna be almost more like a pinky tone because it's gonna be white, pyrrole red light, and burnt umber. And I'm going to drop those in here where we see kind of like a, it's almost like a peach pink tone. Um, Crystal's asking, are you still adding glaze? I am a little bit, um, not as much. So uh, I have a tendency to kind of start with, when I start my overpainting, meaning the areas on top of that complementary color underpainting, um, I start out using a little bit more glaze in the beginning. And then as I work my way towards like the brightest brights, I want it to really pop. So then I'm letting the paint be a little bit more opaque. Um, so I don't want as much of the glaze in there. So I'm working my way towards those brightest areas now. So I'm not having as much of the glaze. So this new kind of mauve color again, guys, it's white pyrrole red light and burnt umber light. Okay. I'm kind of squinting and getting away every now and then to see how it's working for me. Um, I think we need some brighter highlights on the body, some brighter highlights of white. Um, hi, Bambi. This is Bambi's duck photo that I'm painting. I'm so glad you're here. All right, so let's make those brighter areas of that whitish gray. Um, and so I want to use a different recipe. I want to bring in a little bit of that phthalo blue because I think it's going to be fun. I don't really see it that bright as phthalo blue, but I'm going to do it anyways because I like white and phthalo blue. So <laughs> I'm going back to, um, yeah, I got to find a dry spot on my palette. Phthalo blue and white. We're just going to drop a little bit of that in. Maybe I'll tone it down just a pinch. Yeah, I'm gonna to tone it down a little bit with some alizarin crimson. So this is white, phthalo blue, and alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna put these nice highlights in. So I want this new color that I'm making to be brighter than what's there. I'm gonna drop it. Yeah, that's brighter. And bluer. But like I said, even though I don't see it that bright, I'm just gonna do it anyways. because I like it. And where else do we see? It's kind of bright right here. There's like a white stripe here above this black chunk. I'm gonna put it in as blue first and I'm gonna come back with a straighter white. We've got a little pattern of it right there. And I'm gonna put some along the edge here. And this is kind of white here too, but I'm gonna start just by putting it in as phthalo blue. We'll work our way towards that brighter white. Um, thank you, Patty, glad you like it. Okay, so now I wanted to go back and remember I wanted to pop this blue a little bit more. So since we're working with white and phthalo blue right now, I'm gonna make sure my brush is real clean and I'm just going to make a new darker white and phthalo blue, but it's still gonna be lighter than what we have right here. If that makes sense. Um, we really want this to pop, so make sure your white is not contaminated because that'll kill your color. So I just grabbed some new white to squirt out because I wanted brand new fresh white for this pop. And this is only going to be in like one area or two maybe where I'm gonna drop it in. And this is totally opaque because we really want this to show up. Don't put it in too many places. Maybe I'll put a tiny bit of teal, in, or the green in there too to make it more teal. Because I feel like it gets more teal down here. So I just added a little bit of the phthalo green in there now. I think that's good. Um, there's maybe one little highlight right there. I'm afraid to go too bright. Yeah, that's good. It's getting fun. Okay, I'm looking at our time here. Oh, we are just about at six o'clock, so let's kind of do our last minute. Um, so we're gonna add some areas of white here on the pattern and on the little ring of the neck. So 
So I'm gonna go in with almost straight white. I'm gonna put white into my phthalo blue mixture, but it's gonna be mostly white. I'm gonna drop that in. I've got my little brush here because I wanna get these highlights in just the right spot. Got a little bit right there. I'm gonna drop a little highlight on the edge there. And I think there are some kind of whitish feathers right here that I'm missing. So I'm just gonna drop a little of that in. Maybe a little sparkle here along the edge of that. Okay, that's coming together. Um, what else do we want to do? Oh, we want to brighten up the ground here. This is this was just our first pass. So let's make another layer of this grayish color that we made, which was with um, the white alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. But now let's just make it a little bit brighter, so it'll have more white in it. Or a white alizarin crimson Payne's gray. Same recipe as before, just with more white. And we don't really want it to be um, thin with glaze either, because we want this to pop out. Um, so anyone who is painting this duck with me tonight, I can't wait to see it. And I hope that you will share it in my group. If you guys don't know, I have a free group called Allie's Paint Friends. You can find it on my page here. Um, and that's where everybody who does these paint alongs shares their paintings afterwards. And it's so fun to see all of them in one place. Um, and see everybody's interpretation. I love it. And it's super inspiring too. I just love seeing all of your work. Yeah, this looks much better here with a brighter tone in there. I have to hold my, my uh, panel because I lay this these brush strokes down so like fiercely that I move my whole panel. Yeah, that, that pops out more. But now, actually, I feel like I want a little bit of that blue sparkle in the background too. So I'm gonna go into my blue sparkle pile, which was the phthalo blue and white. I'm just gonna dance a little. Oh, that's too blue. Nah, we need more white in there. I know we're up on time, but you guys know how it is. I always wanna just add a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. It's just needed a little bit more color interest going on. I like seeing that little bit of blue in the background. Okay, we're just about there. I just like to do like a little dance of color around the head maybe. What color do I want to do? Um, let's see, Deb is asking, how can we sharpen the edge and the back of the head? Sharpen it. So you mean like you don't want it so loose? I don't know, I kind of like it loose. <laughs> oh, but you know what I just realized? I didn't do anything more on the beak. Um, let's go back to the beak and we're gonna add a little bit of white to that yellow recipe. So that yellow was Hansa Yellow, Pyrrol Red Light, and White. So we're just gonna mix that again, but now with a little bit more white. I'm gonna switch down to a little brush and I wanna just add a bright highlight there on the beak to give that um, some definition because I didn't come back to that. Okay, I'm gonna steady my hand because I wanna put this in the right place here. Yeah, we needed that. And then we've got kind of this rib. He's like smiling. And actually right here, it even gets almost completely white. I'm gonna go in with just about completely white. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in my yellow mixture. It's gonna be mostly white. I'm gonna add that white highlight. I really would want that to be more dry, but it's not. So we're just gonna put it in now so you guys can see it. Um, okay, I know what we should do. If you have some um, quinacridone magenta, I'm not sure if I put that on the paint list, but if you have some, let's put a little bit of that with some white kind of dancing around because I think that's gonna be fun. So it's white and um, 
quinacridone magenta because we haven't used any quinacridone magenta on this piece yet and you guys know I love that color. So let's just drop a little bit in there. We're gonna just dance it around here. I guess if you wanna sharpen up your head, you could do that by putting this little sparkle of color around it if you wanna sharpen it. I don't wanna sharpen my head, I just wanna do something fun. That's too, I don't like that chunk of magenta right there. I didn't knock that back a little bit. It's too dark. Yeah, or too big. I'll just do that. That's better. Okay, we're just about there. Guys, I know we're over. 604. Okay, okay. Um, I maybe would have done a little bit more like mid-tone of green in the background, but now that we have all these other colors, it's, I don't know if it's really necessary. So I'm, you guys see I'm just jumping around with this pinky white color just because I like it. So I'm putting it in a few places. Probably not necessary. All right, we're going to call this duck done. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. Seriously, I got to figure out how to make these not happen while I'm doing a live demo. Um, anyways, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm going to share my finished painting. So usually what I do is I will sometimes tweak it a little bit afterwards and then post it. So I'm going to do that um, probably tomorrow morning. But I would love to see yours. Just show them tonight. You don't even have to. I shouldn't say I'm going to change mine and then post it. I'm going to post mine tonight. Uh, before I do anything, I'm going to post it. But then I might post it again later. Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Please share the video. Um, I would love that. It helps me so much. And if you just watched tonight and you didn't paint, um, you can grab the download on my website, um, alleykstudio.com. You can actually get the downloads for all my paint along. So we have five farm animals um, that we did over the last a little over a month now. And um, they've been a blast and you guys have rocked them. So I wanna see all of your um, farm animals together. Can you guys like make a little collage and put them together for me? I wanna see them together. Next week, we're starting flowers, so I'm excited for that. I know you guys are too, and I'll see you next week. Have a great night, guys.